Greetings my friends and welcome to Cane Veneer Cuff and Bonus Earrings brought to you by tinypandora.com. Well, I've been totally looking forward to this because I wanted to use that uh, cane that we made last week. And so I'm making um, a knife cuff bracelet from it and I had enough left to make you some earrings too. I thought that would be fun. So I'm starting with a Natasha strip. Uh, Natasha's have been very heavily covered, but that's just when you're cutting uh, a nice piece of clay, a nice piece of scrap in this case, down the center and booking it together to make a strip. And I'm going to be using my Easy Cuffs forms and templates today to make this bracelet. That's the one and a quarter inch. They come in all these different sizes. And you just peel off that protective coating there. Anyway, I'm going to use the one and a quarter inch one today because I want a big bracelet this time. And I'm going to use my uh, Natasha strip there for the interior. So I'm going to cut it out using the matching template that's also one and a quarter inches wide. And you peel them when you get them so that they're see-through. That protective coating is so when I mail them to you they don't get all scratched up. So the purpose of these items being clear, I used to use just really just wooden slats and stuff that my husband Spike would cut for me. But I like to be able to see through them because you can see, especially with a piece like this, that I want to get the best part of that uh, pattern down the center of my strip. They're made longer than they need to be because um, your outer strip many times on a cuff is the longest strip of all. So you want to have plenty of template there and they're designed that way. So when you lay this out, make sure it's face down. You want the pattern side that you like face down because it's going to be the inside of this bracelet. And of course, I've done it wrong a few times. I've been staring at the pretty strip and I put it on face up while I'm looking at it and then it disappears forever inside the bracelet, right? So you don't want to do that mistake. So it's face down and you're just making sure you do a good job lining it up because um, it really does fit that strip for a reason. If it's off now, you know, it will really never be straight. So you want to just take a minute to straighten it onto the form. It sticks by itself. And you won't have a lot left to trim off of there. You just want to pinch the edges so you're not pulling them, you know, over the edge or anything like that right now. You just want to pinch the edges because that's going to be the beginning of your nice arched um, cuff. It's going to go in at the sides gracefully and look nice, you know, rather than having, you know, the looking just hacked off at the edges. So I got it like that and see so you just have a little bit of cleanup, just that little bit that your warm hands might have pushed past the edge. But all in all, it should be the size it was when it went on there. And that's really starting your bangles, um, you know, uniformity right then. Because it is the base. It's going to hold it all together. So I've set that aside. We're going to talk about that base later because I did something pretty bad and I'm going to fess up pretty soon. But uh, what we're going to do now is cut that cane up and get ready to lay it out as a veneer. So with your cutting, just try to cut with confidence. You know, a piece that's a little too thick is a lot easier to deal with on a veneer than a piece that's too thin. Uh, so I set my really thin pieces aside if I have them and I put them someplace where um, I can use them in an emergency or I can even stack them up if I have to. Because a dent in your bracelet is kind of hard to fix. A little bump, we're going to fix that and I'll show you how. So now I'm laying them out and I'm kind of going a little bit on the random side here. I'm kind of, you know, I'm keeping some kind of lines, but I don't want them like little soldiers. I'd like them to look a different way. These, the mica shift in this uh, antique gold primo clay causes the gold spots to have different appearances. And I really like that about it. And some of them shimmer and some of them look like they have patterns. And some of them are just being quiet and antique -y. So I'm laying out the spots the same way in just kind of a organic pattern. 
There's my spare pieces, which I'm going to play with in just a little while. Those are enough to make our earrings. So you notice I've got this laid out on this uh, fondant mold. I use this a lot for this. If it's warm or sticky in the room, if I'm going to handle a piece a lot, sometimes I'll put it on that fondant mold so when I'm moving it around, I, you know, I don't stretch it too much, get it stuck down. I also use those fondant molds uh, for putting veneers on bracelets because they have a little give to them. And you'll see that later on. It's kind of nice to be able to press down on the side without damaging anything. So something rubbery and soft like that's great. So now it's shave time. Got my tissue blade. I'm going to make sure it's really clean. And this is the main function of a thin tissue blade like this is for shaving. So I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to rock it. You can feel uh, what you need to cut with the bottom of the blade. It's like clear as can be. You can feel it under your hands that it's a little bit higher than another spot. And that really, really helps you to make a good veneer, no matter what kind of cane or material you're using. If you can get it level this way, it's really great for you. Rather than having to smash it, put it through the machine, distort it, and you'll see that a little bit of mica shift is revealed this way too, which is so fun because as I said, my spots kind of all look different. I love that about it. So take your time with this part and, you know, give it a lot of love. Make sure it's as smooth and nice as you can get it. And then you can start to settle it down with your parchment. I use my cane benders just to rub back and forth. I don't really roll it. I'm not trying to change the size of any anything. I just want to get the parchment down there more and more. And I'll keep doing that till I've got it as smooth as I can. And that's a really fun part, so take your time. And now I've got my veneer. It's pretty smooth. And it's got all those different kind of, um, you know, mica shift properties, which I think is kind of a bonus. Now this part is how I'm making a big dome in this. You can use your uh, Easy Cuffs or Easy Bangles have it too. You can use it in strips to build up the height of your cuff or bangle. Or you can make a little log. Now I know I want kind of a high dome, so I made myself a little log out of that strip of scrap. I have a lot of metallic scrap around and I work with it a lot. And I'm going to make sure that my strip is about a half inch longer than I need for the bracelet. Because thick things wrap around the form in kind of a different way than a thin thing does. So just give yourself a little extra on that kind of stuff. And I'm just flattening my log down until it's got a nice arch I want to see on my bangle. That's all there is to that part, or my, I'm sorry, my cuff. But that's all there is to that part. You're just making an arched even form that's at least as long, you know, as your your cuff is. You got a lot of leeway on the ends and on the sides, okay? Main thing is to not have any bubbles underneath that veneer to make sure you have enough on the edges and the ends to, you know, cover every place you want to and we'll trim it back as needed. So now I know I've got plenty of uh, extension on my edges. I'm just making some really clean cuts so that when I lay this out, I don't have to move it all around on top of my baked form. It'll pretty much go where it needs to go. And there we've got it. I'm going to cut a hole now in the center, and that's for that big old crystal I put in there. You don't have to do this part. It's just I'm crystal crazy right now. We're going to be stocking some of the most gorgeous crystals I've ever seen uh, over at tinypandora.com, and it's been a couple years in the making. I'm finally getting it implemented, so I'm going to be putting a lot of crystals and stuff, but you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. But in this case I have, and that's the crystal that I'm going to be using. And this is where I have to confess. See those findings? 
I stuck those on my uh, form that we made at the beginning. Okay, <laughs> I stuck them in there. And then I uh, forgot to tell you about that. So I stuck the forms, or I stuck the uh, little spoon bales into the sides and I stuck that little, uh, that big crystal in there too. And I baked it with that in there so that I'd have an impression. And then I just didn't, didn't record it. So I'm sorry, that kind of stinks, doesn't it? But that's all I did. I pressed those two pieces in the ends, those two spoon bales. I pressed the crystal right in the center and it made a pointed shape. And see that little exacto knife? I'm just freshening up those shapes because when you take it back off of there and you're going to glue it on with super glue, you need to give the glue and the metal or glass a tooth. You need to, to, to that tooth to stick it together well. So I always stop and kind of freshen up the places I'm going to glue something. And that's what we'll do. I just have that paper there so I don't throw a bunch of crummy stuff on my veneer. Okay. So you know with super glue, I stick with the toothpicks. I don't trust those nozzles, you know, you squeeze it a little too hard, you get a big old splat. So with almost all my liquids, I use toothpicks or, um, you know, the big like skewers or corn sticks. So listen, you're going to just stick your, your uh, spoon bales back on there with super glue. And I use my easy clips, tinypandora.com. You may be able to get them at a store. I've seen them at dollar store six months ago. I never saw them there again. So I just bought a huge amount of them, put them in the store from a distributor because clips will help you with everything you do. Okay, so we're going to put the clips on there and that's going to be a really good bond because those are going to be within the bracelet also. So they're super glued and they're going to be baked in the bracelet. Same thing goes with my uh, crystal for the top. That's a big old 14 millimeter sunburst, I think it is, but you'll know all will be revealed when I put them in the store, all the colors and the descriptions. So, okay, you got your crystal on there. It's standing up. We want it to do that because it's going to be recessed into the bracelet. And all I'm doing now is making sure that it's level because I don't want to have to take it back out and risk damaging it. And let that dry and go forward. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you about that with the findings thing. I don't know what I was thinking. So now it's dry. I'm going to take it off the form. Now these don't really stick on there, but they kind of suck down on there. And all that pinching we did on the edge and fooling around, you know, kind of gets it on there a little bit. So just loosen it. Just break the suction with a tool and take your time. It's not going to break. I think you'd be surprised how flexible it really is and really all your bracelets that are thin should be flexible and practically unbreakable. So if you're getting brittle bracelets we can talk about that later. But you'll see this one is nice and flexy. Uh, the form is not damaged. The black stays on there. And now you got a nice form to work with with nice solid findings that are glued on and a crystal that's glued on and it's nice and bendy. And if we were going to be you know, having a flexible bracelet, that'd be one thing. But this is going to be a, a big old girl. So this is going to be a, a hefty art piece. So I cut a hole right in the middle of that thing with a three quarter inch cutter. All your cutter has to do is kind of complement the size of your crystal. And I don't know what size crystal you might have, but that, uh, that cutter fits that one pretty well. It's leaving it, it's leaving the hole smaller than the crystal, which we definitely want because I'm going to, you know, kind of conform it around there to look the way I want to in the end. And I've stopped a little bit short of that edge because I'm going to kind of draw it over the edge with time. So you see where the stone is centered. I'm going to cut that edge off too because as I draw that down along to meet with the edge of the bracelet, I don't want a lot of excess 
bulging there, I want to pinch it down so that it's bent inward and looks a lot better that way. So just like we do on the edges to kind of give it a little bit of grace, we're doing that on the ends and the edges. Now once you go to trim it up, keep your blade on the inside. You're not trying to tilt it to the outside because you're trying to leave that edge there. It looks really pretty. So your blade is just taking off what's, you know, what's excess on the very inside flat part. Now you want to bake it up. So I had that extra baking time and I had that little extra bit of cane so I laid it out on a number one sheet of scrap and it's a real pretty scrap so I'll just use that for the back and right now I'm texturing it with my favorite texture stamp. It's that script I showed you last time. I'm sure I did because I really just use this one all the time. It just never ceases to interest me so you know I don't really have to have a lot of them like that one. So there's my cane and it's on that uh, textured backing. Smooth it out a little bit and I'm really being gentle here because you know I'm smoothing it out one more time where it's got texture on the back so it's not just flat back there. I don't want to lean on it too hard. Now I'm going to make my earrings with these cutters and this is the best time isn't it? Isn't it the most fun time? Like the big project you know, the bracelet with all the work and time and planning is cooking away and I can play with my extra material and doesn't really matter how it turns out. If I love it, I'm lucky. If I don't like it, I'm not out anything. So I'm sure I don't have to tell you darlings to enjoy the heck out of your scrap, okay? It's the really the best part. So, you know, actually I obsessed about placement of those cutters a lot more than I'm showing you, but it's kind of embarrassing. So I, I tried to shorten it as much as I could. Now you can spritz this with water if you want to, you know, it keeps the cutters from sticking. They're not sticking all that bad. And you know, I'm too lazy to clean up the water, so I just kind of live with that. Those Sculpey ball styluses, man, oh man, are those ever handy for that type of thing. With the little cutter, I just went to the little stylus and it worked out fine for pushing it through there. You just got to be kind of gentle. So now we got big ones and little ones. The pictures, you can't tell that one of them is a lot bigger. They kind of look like they're the same size in the photos that I posted at the end. So the fun thing about that is I can take my findings and I can press them right in inside there. See? So those same kind of findings are also going to go on uh, the bracelet. I just took those ring findings, I put them on the earrings, and then you'll see that I uh, use them in the design. This one just goes right in the middle of it. I, I used a magic gloss on top, and then I used an eye screw. So that's an eye screw, a jump ring, and an ear wire. I'm going to have a lot more jewelry classes if you want to see them, but a lot of you can do these. Um, you know, these are kind of basic gear, uh, jewelry techniques that I think you probably already know. But I think you'll love that magic gloss on top. It really makes a difference. And then deep shine is on the edges in the back because you can just brush that on. It's a lot uh, neater. So those are those two. And then I made the uh, little dangly ones. So I took the small ones and just hung them from another one of those rings. A couple of them. Those rings come in three sizes. Um, I got those, I think I got those at Michael's. I'm looking to put them in the store because I've used them so many times in so many ways. But if you can find a little, little twisty soldered ring, it looks great. I just put a big one around the uh, stone. That came out just like I expected. I was glad. Uh, on the edges, I just hooked uh, a ring and a lobster claw to one side and it fits just right and clips right onto that other spoon bill so you don't need another uh, ring or anything on that side unless you want to make it a little bit bigger. 
So that's my stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come see me at Crafting Live with Pandora and Elena every Saturday on Facebook. And we do stuff like this all the time. So thanks a lot for coming and I will see you next time.